guys, it's Hope. Today I am addressing your makeup concerns. On my Instagram, which if you don't follow me, it's simplyhope12, I posted, it was like two months ago, a bunch of questions about kind of like makeup with you guys. And I was doing that because I was gonna come up with some video ideas, but also I was just trying to kind of figure out like what to focus my videos on when it comes to how you guys like to wear makeup, how much makeup you wear, just like a bunch of like ways that my videos could be helpful for you. With that, I did post one question saying, what are your makeup concerns? And I got so many responses and I wrote them down and I just didn't really touch them for a while until recently I have been working on this video where I listed a bunch of your concerns and my responses to try and help you with those concerns. I try to put on lipstick. The reason why I kind of wanted to do this video too is because I kind of felt like a lot of people who don't watch YouTube videos all the time or people who do, they still struggle with some of these questions and like these concerns and I wanted to bring them to attention to try and help maybe like a step or two that could help change your whole routine and make it so much better than you thought it could be. Without further ado, I think we should just get started. So the first concern that was listed was you want to try, now this is the only one that doesn't really relate to like makeup application or like fully ways that I could really give you advice on, but I just wanted to address that because I know a lot of people are the same category with this as am I. And it says wanting to try new releases but can't waste money on them all. And I agree with that 110%, especially because I am a um, beauty channel, which I know I'm not solely focused on makeup as much anymore, but I still do makeup videos and I do focus on trying to kind of try new products or at least test kind of what's newer and not always talk about the same stuff. I'm constantly battling with that. And the other fact is I'm in college. So I wanted to kind of share what kind of what I do. So for me, it's not the same, but for like a daily user, it's good to research before you buy. So I would wait till reviews come out. Check all to reviews, watch YouTube reviews, people that you trust. Now, everybody's gonna give a different review, but also kind of know like your skin type, your skin concerns, how much coverage you want, if it's for a face product, how much, whatever it is, blendability for eyeshadow, like how um, a eyebrow product, if it's more creamy or a little bit more waxy. Just know what you like because obviously each product is gonna be different and geared towards different people and different concerns. So if you kinda know like what your concerns are, well, you can look for that in your reviews. Also, I would say when you are looking to buy products, save up money each month, which a lot of this is very like kinda given information, but even like a rule of system of how much you want to spend a month on makeup or how many products you're allowing yourself to buy. So I know a lot of people do this when they're trying to go on no buys on YouTube, but they'll say like, oh, I'm only going to buy three face products and three eye products this month, or I'm only going to spend $50 on makeup this month. If you kind of set those boundaries, it helps you to limit and be like, okay, this is what I really want to try and this is what I don't. That's kind of what I do. None of it's like rocket science but i think that just hearing somebody tell you that does kind of bring it to your mindset like oh yeah that makes sense now we're going to move into actual like makeup well i got a few responses but i kind of put it in the category of last powder power last power or long wearing so wanting products to last all day if you're a teacher if you're a nurse if you're a whatever you want your makeup to last more than four or five hours. People doing reviews on YouTube are like, well, it's like five hours, which is good. It's not breaking up. But then there's like all these other people who work and they're like, I need this to last 10, 12 hours at least. The sandwich kind of model. So you want to do primer, then you want to do powder, and then you want to do setting spray. So you find a good primer, a good primer that I like actually. Hydrating primer is not going to make, make your makeup last longer. Um, a dewy primer, not necessarily gonna make it last longer, but you would want something like this, which is the e.l.f. Moisture Lock. This is kind of like a grippy, tacky primer. This is a great drugstore option. I believe it's like six bucks. I talk about it all the time. Especially just kind of like in this area, like on my chain, like in your T-zone. This isn't really like pore filling, but it is definitely smoothing on the skin, and I think that this is a great product for helping make your makeup last longer. I've also heard like the new Cover FX gripping primer is good for that. But something like this can help with lasting power. Also, once you do foundation and concealer and then you set it with powder, that's another great thing. A lot of times, loose powders help set the makeup in a little bit better than pressed. 
but it also depends on your skin type. If you have dry skin, it's a lot harder to find um, powders that are going to make your skin look okay, which is another um, concern that I'm going to address, versus like if you have oily, it's a lot easier to do powders, so on and so forth. So you got to find a powder that's good for setting to help lock it in. A lot of times I do, like loose powders do help lock it in, especially if you take your damp sponge and you press it in your skin. But again, it also depends on your concerns. You have a lot of visible pores because sometimes powder can kind of eventually settle into it. So it all depends on the products you're using as well. But a lot of times if you do just like a plain, just compact powder, this is just a quick overall set. But loose powders definitely help mostly especially like the baking technique or at least just pressing it in and not letting it sit like excess powder which is baking but just pressing it in it helps then the setting spray the setting spray kind of melts it all together and just kind of holds it in and locks it a lot of times people do setting spray another way of powder setting spray now if you have super oily skin that might be fantastic if you have dry skin i would not do that because that is just going to just cling and just be horrible for your skin then again you also have to think if you're putting this on your skin every single day, you're clogging your pores by doing that so much. So you just have to be really careful. But yes, the three steps would be primer, powder, setting spray that really locks it in. And then again, you have to find good long wearing products, which I will address that with another category that is coming up. So I will, I will give you options, but also you want to find products like maybe an actual foundation instead of a BB cream because BB creams are tend to be lighter coverage. They might wear off. Faster. Also, like some mascaras, they don't last very well. They don't stay and they might smudge and transfer uh, again versus some that won't come off until you wash your face at the end of the night. Different products like that. There's some blushes that'll stay on your face and you can see all day and then there's some that are just gone instantly. Different tips like that. So when you're looking at reviews, definitely note like how long they're wearing, if you can still see it at the end of the day, stuff like that. The next category is your face is looking too dry or cakey, or powdery, all of those, I just kind of combined them all. A lot of your guys' responses to that was my skin looks too powdery, too cakey, too makeup-y, was kind of like the term you use. You obviously have to pay attention to what you're wearing, but to kind of address like the dryness and maybe the extra powderiness, use a moisturizing primer, or at least moisturize your face before you put on makeup. And a lot of times it's good to moisturize and let it sink in for a good 20, 30 minutes before applying makeup. Also oil with foundation. When it's the winter time, I do have more dry skin. I have like normal to dry, but I do have more dry. I really don't have oily skin. So mixing in an oil with a foundation can help make the foundation just give a dewier effect or putting the oil on your skin before the foundation. Now it does depend on some foundations because some aren't gonna work well with that and they're gonna break apart, but there's a lot of foundations that go hand in hand with oils that are really good for just keeping the moisture in your skin. And even when you set with powder, you still kind of have that moisture in your skin. Also minimizing the powder usage for when it's like too powdery or dry. A lot of that is sometimes if you have really dry skin and it looks really pow powdery, Definitely use more cream products. You can find cream bronzers, cream blushes, cream highlights. I don't have a whole lot of those to recommend, but I will link down below Jessica Braun, who I absolutely love. She did a video on cream drugstore products, which is bronzer, blush, and highlight of good recommendations for those, and I fully trust her opinion. So I'll link that video down below for you guys to have a reference on that. It's definitely, if you are having that powdery look, try to minimize using powder bronzer, powder blush, powder highlight use those creams which will help keep that um, moisture in your skin. The other one is if you're having kind of like cakey matte cakey looking skin a lot of times it's the foundation you're using so if you're using a super matte foundation it's going to be a lot more noticeable. Now if you have oily skin you might have to do a matte foundation or you could also do a more natural looking foundation and then apply like a powder on top just to set and help it kind of stay together. I really like the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation. It's a great one. I ran out of it. I need to repurchase it for an everyday use. I think if you have do normal combination, dry, oily, any skin type, I feel like would really like it because you could kind of suit to each skin type. Like if you have oily skin, you can use more powder. If you have dry skin, you can use less powder and maybe more cream. So you can kind of give and take to work with your skin type. But I think that's very important when it comes to like the cakiness. Sometimes matte foundations can just be too much. Also, the cakiness, 
you can be using too much product. You can be applying way too many layers. A lot of times less is more. Use one layer, it'll kind of even out your skin tone. You can add a little concealer to cover a little bit more. But if you're kind of caking it on layer after layer after layer, that's gonna make it look cakey. So minimize the amount that you are using because that is definitely an issue when it comes to caking. Also like concealer, if you're applying a thick layer of foundation and then you're like doing a huge triangle of concealer, you don't need that. Concealer, you can just do a little bit right here and pat it out and be good. You don't need that huge thick layer if you're doing a huge thick layer <laughs> of foundation. Maybe you're doing a thinner layer of foundation and you wanna brighten, then you could take the concealer down a little bit, but it really depends on how much you have to cover and also kind of like how your skin does. If it tends to look more cakey, if you have a lot of pores and a lot of acne that it could even cling to, that can cause cakiness. Now, if you have cakiness, ways to kind of minimize is definitely take your beauty sponge. I have this L'Oreal one. These ones are kind of like iffy. The Real Techniques ones are good too. Definitely like just kind of press in your skin to try and remove it. This is good for soaking up product if there's excess, there's a hair. And just kind of fully blending it. These sponges are great. Also, a lot of people don't wet these. Stick it under the sink and kind of squeeze it out until it's fully expanded and make sure you get all of the excess water. Like I'm squeezing this and there's no water coming out of it and there shouldn't be. Sometimes you have to like put it with a towel and kind of go like that to squeeze out the excess. So those are kind of my ways of addressing the dry, cakey, powdery lookingness on your skin. But kind of once you get that cakey look, it's hard to take it away. A lot of times you just have to use ways to try and avoid it. Also, I should mention, like with the whole powdery, f cakey lookingness, you should be shaving your face, which is, I will link down below the ones I get from Target, which are little face shavers, to shave and your skin. Um, you have to be very careful. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube that you can look it up. You're not supposed to have any products on your skin, just freshly wash and you just shave all the peach fuzz and that'll make the um, products apply a lot better and then when you put moisturizer on it's easier to sink into your skin as well the next one is applying eyeshadow better so like blending a lot of people struggle with that so I did film the eye look that I did today or I'm wearing today when I was I filmed it when I was getting ready I'm gonna kind of show you what I did so one step when you're applying eyeshadow better is to use a really great primer. So the primer I forgot to grab that I used today that I really love is the CoverGirl Lid Lockup. This is a very sticky primer. The only issue with this is if you already have foundation or concealer on your eyes, a lot of times it's hard to blend. So I would say this primer actually might be better if you do your eyes first. If you do your face, that's fine, but just make sure you don't have a lot of excess powders, creams, anything on your eyes before applying this because then it can get a little bit patchy because this is a stickier primer that really grips onto your makeup. If you have non-oily eyelids, you might not need this, but I feel like a primer is always good to use or at least conceal your eyes before something as a base to help grip the eyeshadow on your eye. But I like this one. This one is stickier though, so you have to be careful, but it worked out perfectly today because I didn't do my face makeup first. I've heard the Milani one's good. I had that one. I tried it a long time ago. I lost it. It was st some. It, it disappeared after a prom two years ago, so I don't know. And then I always like to set with a matte cream. A lot of people don't do this, but or they say to not do this, but for me, when I'm thinking about people on an everyday basis, when it comes to doing eyeshadow, a lot of people don't need these intricate eye looks. They just want something really simple and really pretty. And so I feel like it's best to just kind of set your eye with a matte cream shade if you're my skin tone or if you're a deeper skin tone, a color that'll match your skin tone because I think that that really helps smooth it all out and create a nice base. And I got perfect color pigment payoff with setting it, so I don't think it really makes a difference. I think sometimes, especially with the tackier primer, it grips funny to your eyeshadow if you don't. I love this Wet n Wild Single Shadow. If the palette that you're using, which is the one I'm gonna mention today, if that one doesn't have a matte cream in it, well, actually I'm mentioning two today, but if it doesn't have a matte cream in it, it's really important to, well, actually I'm mentioning three, <laughs> but it's really important to set it with a shade that matches your skin tone because I think that that really helps kind of lock it in. Like I said, prime, powder, set, you know what I'm saying? Perfect for the eye too, except for your eyes, you don't really set unless you get settings branded, but that doesn't really make a difference that I know of. So this is definitely a great one. This Wet n Wild Single Shadow in Brulee, this is like 99 cents or $1.99. I don't know, it's really cheap. And I've had this forever and I use it all the time. 
I would say when it comes to applying eyeshadow like blending, it's always best to start off with lighter shades. So I use my Jaclyn palette because I love this. You have every single shade you possibly would need. It's like $38, $39, and that's a great deal. If you take away these four here, it's a neutral palette that you can use. It's great. Just kind of an everyday palette. It blends great. I just love it. No matter Jaclyn or Morphe's controversy, I just love this palette. So what I started off with was using the two shades Silk Cream and MFEO and I mixed these two and started blending it in my crease with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. Now that really helps to just kind of create a nice transition shade which is where you'll get kind of a wash of color but you can constantly build it up which is what I like. You want to be one to build up instead of go in with too much. So that's what I kind of did here. I just kind of went back and forth to try and build it up a little bit. That's kind of... And importance too is obviously you're choosing palettes that are easy to blend which I will once I get to like my um like products that I think are user friendly and long wearing I will mention the palettes that I want to mention for that but the one that I use is the Jaclyn because I think that's a really great one and I figured this would be a good tutorial to follow along with but I personally think it's best to apply your mattes first just because then you kind of get that over with and then you can apply the shimmer and the shimmer will stand out a little bit so I did that and then I went into Butter and Pukey, which are these two shades. And I still kind of, I took a different brush, but I really didn't need to. I focused a little bit more in the crease instead of like a broader spectrum of the other one. I focused a little bit more in the actual crease in my eye. It, it all kind of just blended together eventually, but it's good to have a base to start to build. That was my point. So I went back and forth with that for a bit, just kept blending to add more color. Then I went into Pooter, which is this middle shade between them and I took a smaller brush and focused it on the outer part and brought it into the crease a little bit. That one I focused a little more on the outer but I kept going in and back and forth and just kind of if you see me just pulling brushes up and not showing it's just because I keep going back and forth just to kind of add until it looks right which is very important too. You want to take your time. You want to kind of go in with um, transitions and then start building but then constantly go back and blend. I also took a really fluffy brush that had nothing on it or I didn't add anything on it. Maybe from like the last time I used because I didn't wash my brushes last but something like that to help kind of blend and make it all seamless. Then I took these three shimmers which I think is probably hard to tell but I for first took these two and then this one. Essentially I took the shade Sissy which is a little bit more of a pinky like um orangey reflection to it which I really don't these shades on this top I never use but I thought this pinky look would be really pretty a lot of times I stick to these but I took that on like the outer part of my lid then I took this shade which is little lady and I stuck that in the middle of my lid and then finally I took the brightest one which is called faint and I put that on the inner so I kind of just did a transition of inner middle outer on my lid and that's kind of what I came with. I came out with. I went back and forth um, with my fingers I first applied which is great when you apply shimmers to do your finger because I think that that really is an easy thing and it's easy to control as if you use your finger. I did eventually wet my brush and I just took a flat brush and wet it and then I applied these shadows again. So I just kept building it until I got kind of like the pigment I wanted. If you don't want it to be super intense, don't spray your brush with your setting spray. If you don't want that intense shimmer, just stick with your finger and just kind of apply or even use a dry brush and apply. It all depends on how intense you want it, but that's kind of like my easiest, best tip. And then I just take my um, crease brush and keep going back and forth. Eventually I did add in buns right here. Just to kind of deepen the outer. It was just slight. It didn't really do a whole lot. You don't have to do that, but that's just kind of what I did. I focused that kind of on the outer and brought it in. I just kept going back and forth. That's the important thing is just go back and forth, keep blending, just keep using circular motions, going back and forth with a fluffier brush. And that was that. I think that's all I used. And then I just think went in with the um, matte shade again with that brush that I originally used to set my primer and just kind of really fluffed it out and made it look all seamless like all the edges and everything. So that's kind of what I would do with like eyeshadow. It's just taking practice. You just want to start light and keep building. That's kind of my tips with that. I did get one question specifically. Do you use a pore filling or hydrating primer first? Now usually you wouldn't use them both together so I would say probably hydrating. I would use the hydrating maybe, maybe more on my 
here and make my forehead that's where i'm dry use it where you're dry and then use your pore filling on your nose and your chin right here wherever you need pores filled i wouldn't use both in the same area is what i'm trying to say use your hydrating where you're more dry and use the pore filling where you need to fill your pores i would say hydrating first it really depends it doesn't really matter just as long as you're kind of not overlapping because the pore Filling one can start to pill depending on the primer that you use. Okay, now we're gonna get into products. So user friendly and long wearing. So, like I said, the Jaclyn Hill palette is a great one for eyeshadow. If you're looking for a cheaper, simple option, the ColourPop ones, this is the Double and Tendere palette, or however you say that. This is a great one. ColourPop has a bunch of palettes like this, which is like half the price. You're getting way less shadows, but if you're looking for something like that, they have great ones like that. I also like the LA Girl Quads if you want something really simple. This one is in Urbanize. This is all matte, but I love this. Bronzers and face products. This Milani Silky Matte Bronzer is a great like bronzer contour if you're looking for a powder. It's very beautiful. I love this one. It blends very nicely. Um, I do like this Catrice Sun Lover Gold Bronzer if you're looking for more glowy. This is more warm tone. This one's great as well. A blush is the Benefit Dallas blush. I also like the LA Girl Just Blushing blushes. Those are great. Those last. Flower Beauty has great ones. There's a lot of great ones out there. And then the Smashbox Spotlight Palette I think is a great highlighting palette that lasts all day. It looks beautiful. And it really is easy and simple to use. It's really hard to mess it up. That's what I like about these two is it's pretty hard to mess up. You can go in with a light hand and build it. Also this Maybelline Last Sensational Mascara. I like this one. This is like really old. I need to get rid of this one but I'm checking this in my empties afterwards. But this was an OG classic favorite of mine. I still really love it and I think this is a great long wearing lasting mascara. Holds a curl. It's really good. I'm wearing a white shirt, which is really horrible when you're wearing a lot of makeup and have swatches on your hand. So then I'm also going to jump into products that look good in person because a lot of times when you go up close, it's hard to use products that look good, maybe from afar, but when you get up close and you're talking to somebody, you want your skin to still look good. And most of my videos are focused on products that do look good. I don't like to waste my time wearing products that don't look good on an everyday basis, but a couple to mention. Flower Beauty Light Illusion. This is a great foundation. This is a more medium coverage. I think this adds a really good dewy look to your skin, but it's not super full coverage. If you want more, more than a medium coverage, you're not going to get that from this. Also, the Physicians Formula, the Healthy Foundation. I don't have it. I love that one, though. That one's great. You can build it up, add more coverage. This concealer, the Revlon Candid one, is good. This is a more medium to full, but it's not like a super thick full coverage. Great. It looks beautiful. I'm wearing it today. The Catrice one, again, love this. This is a high coverage but thinner, not super thick concealer. This one's, they're both really inexpensive. I do have this, um, the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. Mine's like broken, but that one's a really great one as well. This powder, the Physicians Formula, the Healthy Powder, I think this looks beautiful on your skin. It doesn't look too powdery. I'm wearing it today, and it doesn't look too powdery. Like I said, this this or this bronzer, this bronzer is great. The Milani and the Catrice that I mentioned earlier. Just trying to give you guys some options. That Smashbox Spotlight Palette looks pretty good. This one, it can have a little bit of shimmer, but it's not too bad. This is a great one to not emphasize your pores. So those are a bunch of products that look good in person, but also, again, I, my videos are surrounded by products that look good in person. I don't like to waste time on products that aren't. So definitely like check out other Get Ready With Me's. A lot of times I talk about that too and focus on that in my videos. Let's talk about products that work best for me because a lot of that, the concerns was, I just wanna know what products would work best for me. So kind of like to go along with the realm of what I've been talking about, know your skin type and your concerns. Are you oily? Are you combination, which is oily and dry? Are you more normal? You don't really have skin concerns or production, oil production, how your skin type is. Are you more dry? Um, you kind of need to know that before you go into buying products, especially like face products. And then also kind of your skincare. Are you very acne prone? Do you break out easily? Are you, um, do you have a lot of acne to cover? I have a lot of acne scarring on my chin that I like to cover, stuff like that. Also, you wanna narrow down your options. So when you're researching, definitely, like if you are oily, then stay away from dewy foundations and go right to the matte or normal category. You can also look up reviews on how matte some foundations are. Some are matte, but then there's some that are really matte that like you would have to have the most amount of oil on your skin to have this matte foundation look normal. So you kind of really have to look up the categories. Ulta and Sephora both have 
like foundation quizzes to like um, find that. So there's a lot of research with that. Eyeshadow, do you have really oily eyelids? Do you not? Eyebrows, which I haven't really talked about much. Do you have thicker brows? Are they thinner? Do you want them to have like like the angle tips, which are easy to fill in if you have thicker? Do you want more like hair-like stroke looking brows where you would have to buy a thinner one? Do you want brow gel to set? How, how, how much of an intensity do you want that you want to be more crunchy looking or like fully holding or just kind of like a light? There's so many options. You need to kind of narrow down your ideas first and then do research. Also read reviews. What do people think of these products? If it has a horrible review, then maybe not go out and spend your money on it. Um, if you watch YouTube videos, find people that you trust and that you can um, get from their reviews. Maybe watch a few different ones that kind of come to a conclusion based on your skin type and concerns. They also have samples at Sephora. So if you want a high-end one, go to Ulta doesn't do that, but Sephora does have samples. You can ask for samples. I've done that before. I went in and wanted to try the Smashbox foundation. I can't remember which one, but it's really popular. Say so you want a sample, they'll give you a couple pumps and a little container and that gives you like at least one to two uses to try. Things like that. And then kind of just to know what works best is you just got to try. So once you narrow down your options, maybe buy one or two. And usually they have good return policies, but don't be that person that tries and uses half the bottle and then decides they want to return it. That's just scummy. Don't be that person. I think that you just really have to research, have to know your skin, kind of like examine it. It's not a horrible thing to look in the mirror and be like, okay, this is what I want to cover. This is what I want to do. Okay. And the last category that I've had so many people say they wanted to try products that have good ingredients that aren't horrible for my skin and that don't break me out. So I am going to give you a list of six ingredients to stay away from. Okay. And your skincare products. Now I am not a dermatologist. I am not a science person. I was doing research on this. Definitely look more into these, but these are just kind of common ones to stay away from. I'm going to give you what it is and the, the name of it, kind of like what, how, like what exactly that is if it's like not a common name, and then also kind of why to stay away. So fragrances or phthalates, that is just basically chemicals um, that they add to your, to your products to make them smell good. And a lot of times they're not good, they're chemicals. So they can cause allergies or allergic reactions, which is causing you to break out. A lot of times people break out from that stuff. It can also mess with your hormones. And let me just give you a disclaimer, all of these can possibly be cancer causing. What in this world is not cancer causing? That should just be a disclaimer, but a lot of these did say cancer causing, but I'm not really gonna include that because that's kind of a given with a lot of these things. But yeah, they can essentially mess with your hormones if they do get into your skin. Next one are parabens, which are, these are preservative chemicals that mimic estrogen. So they can kind of weak your, weaken your hormones a little bit. Parabens and then BHA and BHT, they're just kind of preservatives. They disrupt your hormones. They're there to kind of make the makeup last longer. So a lot of times if you buy foundations that are going to be lasting, for 24 months before the expiration, which is that little kind of jar that has like 12 months or 24 or six or whatever on your product. You can find that on most packaging. The longer they are, the more preservatives they probably have in it or more parabens they have because it's trying to preserve the product. Another one would be, I can't pronounce this word. I'll put it on the screen. This is another one that's part of kind of antibiotics. This is basically to reduce the bacterial contamination in products. So. Yes, you might be buying a product that might go bad sooner, but this is also kind of more chemicals that are put into your makeup to help make it last longer and also not necessarily making it last longer, but this one is to more kind of get rid of bacteria in it, which is obviously more chemicals that you're putting on your face that are sinking into your skin. Sodium lothrin sulfate, or, or it's also seen as um, 1 comma 4 dioxane, which this is basically just like a glycerol. This product kind of helps um, whatever product you're using to sink into your skin, your hair, to help absorb it. So this is kind of common in foundations and concealers. When you are looking for foundations, you're constantly, a lot of people will say, this doesn't look like it's sitting in my skin. This looks like it's just kind of melting into my skin and making it look good. Now, there are products out there that can do that without using this ingredient. This ingredient can also cause irritation and acne, which is what a lot of you are saying. The foundations, how heavy they're, they are in your skin, how often you're using it, and also the ingredients, which is like 1 comma 4 dioxane. I don't know how exactly it's pronounced, but this one is definitely cause skin irritation and acne. 
and it can also some in hair products this is used to help foam up your products like sulfates they say stay away from sulfates because that's what helps the foundation or your hair shampoo foam which is not really good for your hair lead is constantly found in lipsticks it's how it's pretty much absorbed from like pollution and raw materials that are used to put in it but stay away from that you don't want to be ingesting lead Definitely stay away from harsh ingredients in your foundations. It's very hard, especially when you buy inexpensive products. I know Honest Beauty, which is um, Jessica Alba's makeup line, that's supposed to be good. There's a bunch of lines out there of more natural makeup. You just have to do your research. A lot of times these products are more expensive, so you kind of got to give or take. But just try and stay away from some ingredients. I'm not the best with it. But if you're noticing skin irritation or acne, these can kind of be the problems. <laughs> So, I know this video is long, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope this was helpful if you guys have more like concerns that you want me to try and address. Or maybe not just like me, but other people down in the comments. We can all try and help each other out and figure out kind of our skin needs and makeup concerns. Because, you know, it's hard to kind of figure it all out. You jump on YouTube and you see all these intricate tutorials and you're like, whoa, take it like five and a half steps back. I need to figure this out from the basic level. I hope this was helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. I'd love to have you stick around. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.